dawn in the Japanese countryside 35 miles from Tokyo. Every day of the year, Otake Risuke leaves his house at this time to pray. He always carries his sword. As he walks across his garden, he leaves behind the modern world. He moves back in time to the 15th century. In these few steps, Master Otake becomes a samurai warrior, in thought, word, but not in deed. He is among the finest swordsmen living today, the teaching master of probably the best martial arts school in the world. He does not teach a sport. At this school, the students learn an art of killing that they will never use. The second part of the morning ritual consists of exercises in the art of swordsmanship. The Japanese call this Iai Jutsu, the art of drawing the sword. Even now, life in Japan is lived on the floor. So it's natural to start fighting techniques from a kneeling position. Also, at night, a kneeling person is harder to see. While he practices, Master Otaki always imagines that there is an attacker before him and aims his blows at precise points of the attacker's body. His sword strokes are aimed to kill. After each group of strokes, part of the technique is to shake the blood from the sword before returning it to the scabbard. He never takes his eyes from his imaginary enemy. The exercises are planned to counter an attack from any direction. To be effective, the art must be used by a warrior who has developed his willpower. どんな ジャングルの向こうに寝ているところが姿が映ったもんで、のイスヌツキサだったって。一瞬岩を持とうすという言葉があるね。オールサムライソートパフェクションウィズザソード。ノットオンリーインザファイティングテクニックスバトインザウェポンズ
Sword making reached its peak of skill by the 14th century. The process starts with a lump of crude iron. It is purified by hammer blows and by pouring a liquid made from ash over it. There are six men working in Japan now who can make swords to the standard of perfection of the old masters. And Yoshihara-san is one of them. Making a sword is a religious act, a blending of faith and skill, and the result is a work of art. A blade made by Yoshihara-san is worth about 10,000 pounds. Most of them are bought by collectors and, to his regret, put straight into bank vaults. The art of making a Japanese sword lies in the folding of the metal. It is folded up to 30 times, which makes millions of layers. Out of this process comes the lightness and strength of the blade. After the folding, the lump is beaten into its final shape. The swordsmith makes only the blade. Other craftsmen finish the polishing and sharpening and make the scabbard, hilt and guard. Master Ataki's own sword is 600 years old and the guard is 400 years old. Both were made by famous craftsmen. The whole assembly is held together by just one small bamboo peg. Everything about the sword is practical. The beauty of its shape exists because an elegant curve is strong and cuts well. The groove is cut into it to lighten the weapon without weakening it and to prevent suction gripping the sword in a wound. teaching sessions at the school start with practice in the art of the sword. The students practice the exercises in their own time, but always watched by Master Ataki. It takes many years to attain speed and precision to get the control needed to stop the sword instantly in a focused cut. Perhaps the hardest of all is to learn the relaxed balance that allows the body to spin so quickly. To practice the techniques of combat, the school uses wooden swords, bokken, so that a mistake does not cause injury or death. Their teaching is based on the weak points of Japanese armor, which for the sake of flexibility did not protect the blood vessels on the insides of the arms and legs. Their purpose is very different from the sword-based sport of kendo where the strikes are aimed at the protected part of the body. めんくるやつを
いわ目に切ったはずなのに腹疲れてねそれで立ちながらかわして顔面でさらに立ちを回して腰へくるそれを体をかわしながら打ち固定もうもう一人入れるくらいできましたねこれを絡んでこの首くるこう打ちますこれはもうつきますねお互いの円を取るこれは今度は首を打ちますよえい首体をかわして固定下から固定さっと外して相手しながら両方つけるねはいあえいこれがまだ戻らないうちにこれ It takes a t a k i sensei many hours to explain fully the meaning of one pattern of cuts and 13 seconds to do them at proper speed. To enable contact training without striking their training partner, they redirect some cuts to engage their partner's sword. Each strike is simultaneously attack and defense. The students practice many different sequences of strokes. Each sequence is called a cutter. They never practice free sparring due to the danger of serious injury. They always aim the blows at the weak points in the armor, although they don't wear armor except on special occasions. Master Otaki has two sons. This is the eldest, Nobutoshi. Both have been trained all their lives and they are now both very skilled. The first cutters they studied employ single swords. They learn the basic types of cuts, slashes, and parries first, then move on to the finer skills in the more difficult carters. みんなその強い何回試合しても相手に負けなかったとか大勢の人を散る倒したとかそういう剣豪ブームがありますけどもあれは剣豪ものはほとんど作家小説家ですねそんなのの創作であって呪術的なものはほとんど90はもう創作ですから実際のところは公表されていないんですね。But always one of the pair has a sword. Formal teaching sessions. The students work in pairs, there being only room for two or three pairs at a time. Each pair works through a series of carters, and then their place is taken by another pair. All teaching is individual and is by demonstration. There are many schools in Japan that teach the samurai martial arts, more than a thousand of them. However, in most of these, the techniques are so ritualized that it is hard to see them being used in a real fight. At this school, the oldest of them all, they are still truly martial. The students are not allowed to forget that men died to learn what they are being taught. The status of the school depends upon the ability of the teaching master. 
This means that Master Otaki must be at the center of focus in any study of the school. Yet he dislikes such a concentration on himself. For him it is the school that is important. He sees himself as the servant of the teaching and knowledge preserved by it. The school has great status in Japan. It's an intangible cultural asset, a sort of living national trust property. Once, most of the students used to be farmers from the area. Now, many come from nearby cities, or even Tokyo, two or three times a week. They come from a range of occupations, teachers, dentists, businessmen, accountants. There have never been many of them. At the moment, there are only about 50 active members. The school has always accepted any student who was prepared to study seriously. Though all the teachings were one secret, there was never any question of limiting the training to the Japanese hereditary samurai class. Students pay a small fee to join and an equally small regular contribution. New members must sign an oath before joining the school. <laughs> the rules of the blood oath are do not lie, be discreet even amongst your family, don't argue or fight or be impolite, avoid bad places at all costs, don't fight until qualified, and keep your oath or be punished by the god of the temple. The rules of the blood oath, like everything else about the school, were laid down by the founder, Master Choi Sai. Master Choi Sai was buried here in 1488, at the age of 102. Around him are buried many generations of the masters of the school. The tomb is set amongst trees close to one of the great shrines of Japan. When the founder retired from active fighting, he came to Katori Shrine, and there he started the school. He said that the teachings came to him by divine revelation after long meditation. Katori Shrine is one of the most important centers of Japan's oldest religion, Shinto, which is deeply involved with the worship of nature, especially as in the spirit of trees. It was in the open spaces of the shrine that the founder taught. And it's from the shrine that the school gets its full name, Tenshin Shoden Katori Shinto Ryu. The founder was a Buddhist, but there is no conflict for a Japanese in worshipping at both Shinto shrines and Buddhist temples. Master Otaki is the teaching master of the school, but there is also an hereditary headmaster, the direct descendant of the founder. Twenty generations separate him from his ancestor. His house is built beside an ancient dojo, now used once a year ceremonially by the senior students. In it are the statues of the founder and his wife. It's rare for such an old wooden building to survive in Japan in private possession. For Master Otaki, the continuity of the school proves the rightness of the founder's teaching. The founder had served and fought for a great family for many years 
But when their fortunes declined, he decided that there was much wrong with a way of life that had no future. When he retired to Katori Shrine, he taught that the art of the sword is the way to peace. His main teachings are on three scrolls that have been copied thousands of times by the masters. The teachings are secret, to be given to the students only when they reach high enough standards. The master gives the first scroll after about five years, the second after ten years, and the third is given only to the most advanced and dedicated students after more than fifteen years, but then only if they are more than forty-two years old. The scrolls are not just about fighting techniques, but include religion and philosophy. All these are combined in a comprehensive strategy for life that governs everything, advising even how to choose the position of your house. そういうところ流す。流す Master Ataki chose the building site for his own new house by these principles. He was uprooted by the building of the huge international airport for Tokyo, and the government helped him to buy a new site. It was not easy to find somewhere that followed the rules, but he succeeded. To the east, there is a small stream. To the north, a hill. There are open fields to the south, while to the west there is a road. These same rules were used to determine the site of the Emperor's Castle in Tokyo and many other important sites in Japan. The school has always drawn strength from its country setting. It has not depended on the whims of great men. It has been separated from the affairs of state, one reason perhaps why it has survived. Master Ataki himself was a farmer until he retired to concentrate on the school. When he was forced to move his house, he brought two important things with him. One was the training hall, the dojo, taken apart and reassembled on the new site. The other was the ornamental trees that he had trained in the traditional Japanese manner, branch by branch, into the perfect informal shape. He is a deeply traditional Japanese, and therefore his new house is built on the ancient pattern. He lives in it with his wife, a son and his wife, and a grandchild.
The young Otaki began to study at the school during World War II. As a young Japanese, he knew that he would be asked to die for his emperor, and he did not know if he had the strength to do that. He heard about the school and went there as a student to see if they could teach him this sort of courage. After a rather dull and brief military service, he returned to the farm and continued as a student of swordsmanship. His master taught him the samurai code of honor, Bushido, the way of the warrior. For Master Otaki, the popular idea of Bushido is over romantic and misleading. いつみを捨てて素を掛けてやれっていうことなんですよね。誤解しやすいです、あれは。ただ死ねばいいんじゃないですね。物事をやったことにおいて失敗したら俺は腹切ってえぎ、生きて恥を晒しても障害かけて償わなきゃならないです。その失敗したことについてね。それが本当の武士道なんです。本当の武士道というのは、The samurai reached extraordinary levels of skill in fighting. They also believed that honor was more important than life. So they fought without fear and were formidable because of that. Their code was harsh, but at its best, it led to lives of courage and deaths of great dignity. To be a great swordsman required more than physical skill and willpower. Amongst the subjects that they studied was a special mystical form of Buddhism. They used it in a practical way, weaving spells to cure illness and to defend against death in battle. Master Ataki is well known as a healer. Many people come to him for treatment. When patients come to see him, he makes a spell suitable for their particular illness. The drawing is a shorthand for a complex set of gestures. くじの縁というのがあります。これは、ルンピョウ、トウシャ、カイジュン、リツ、ザイ、ゼン、ここのつですね。この、ここのつの縁像、これはインド伝来のものであって、ムドラと言いますね。サインです。ルン。これ一つ
There are two ways of making the spell, either by making the hand prayer shapes or by drawing lines, each line representing one of the hand positions. It is then necessary to focus the spell, and that is why the tenth character is used. So for protection against drowning in a shipwreck, the warrior drew the spell on his hand and then wrote a tenth, water character. In battle, the warrior did the same to protect himself. Master Ataki thinks that the idea people have of fighting warriors as Zen Buddhists is quite wrong. To follow Zen is to spend many hours in contemplation, which he feels is quite unsuitable for fighting men. They needed a practical religion that could put them quickly into the right frame of mind to fight. To complete the cure, the magical spell is stroked over the patient. She must then take it away, place it on a riverbank, and walk away without looking back. The training session for advanced students covers all types of weapons. For each weapon, there are special exercises. After the sword sessions, they move on to single sword against short and long swords. These were the weapons carried by the samurai until just over a century ago. They could, of course, choose to draw only one of their swords. But once both were unsheathed, special coordination had to be learned to use them effectively. Crossing the two blades is a way of blocking an attack without damaging the blades, and from there either sword can be brought in to cut the opponent down. Many fighting arts use a star, called a bow by the Japanese. It is a brilliant weapon when handled by a master. The problem for a swordsman fighting against a longer weapon is how to get past it and reach his opponent. A well-placed blow from an oak staff can shatter a sword blade or a helmet, but the sword can make a lethal wound by the lightest of touches. Encircling the sword blade with the tip of the staff can flick the sword out of its owner's hands. The fighter with the staff must, however, always stay out of reach of the swordsman, since he has no close quarters defence. Father and son practising sword against halberd. These are the most spectacular and elaborate carters of all. The halberd is a deadly weapon, heavy, as sharp as a sword, and able to reach the weak places in armour from a distance. No good swordsman would permit this, and yet he must move in to attacking range. Because of the length and weight of this weapon, it is held in the middle for balance. To counter these powerful strokes demands great skill from a swordsman. He only has a slight speed advantage, and the halberd has the butt end of its shaft available to parry blows. The warrior's problem when fighting the long spear is different. The man holding a spear will always try to use it at a distance, and the problem for the swordsman is to prevent its powerful momentum striking him. The warrior must attack past the spear point. 
but his opponent can draw it back quickly. Master Otaki uses his full willpower and energy to fight his way through, but even then it is difficult to close with the spearman, who retreats. There are certainly many other techniques that the school thinks are too secret to be shown to outsiders. They would include unarmed combat using particularly dangerous techniques, since they were designed for the battlefield. Yet at the heart of the teaching, in spite of the concentration on the art of killing, the founder's message is one of peace. He taught that fighting is the last resort and to kill is evil. それと有名な熊笹の教えという教えを残しています。熊笹の教えっていうのは、カトルの道場のチュンペンには今でもたくさん入っていますけれども、細い角ですね、あの笹ですね。そこへ文芸者が訪ねてきたときには、人て教えを願いたいってきたときには、じゃあ門前な立ちぬ。その熊笹の上に御座を教えてそしてその上に長久先生乗ってこうシャッと潰れないですねさっと乗ってさあどうぞっていうことそうするとそれを見た文芸者はもう見ただけでもう毛穴が争奪になってね自分が乗ったらぐちゃぐちゃっとこう倒れますからそれ長久先生は御座の上に自然としてもう座ってられる。その真似はできないんです。マスター・アタキ despises the samurai who went around searching for fights and triumphantly killing. He thinks that they led distorted lives and that it's wrong for them to be admired. They left nothing. But the founder of the Katori Shinto Ryu left a family that continues after 20 generations and a school that has made no compromises in its teachings. Since the 15th century, and yet retains relevance for its 20th century pupils. The balance between the art of killing and following a moral way of life is one that many masters of fighting arts maintain. For them, and for Master Ataki, the arts of war are also the way of peace. <laughs> 